Welcome back to another episode of 40 Facts About the 40K Universe. I am your host, Gersh One, and you are watching One Mind Syndicate. Today, we finally talk about the Blood Angels. We start off the Blood Angel series um, as we get into the origins of the Blood Angels. If you guys have any suggestions for Warhammer topics that you guys would like us to cover, don't forget to comment down below with suggestion, followed by whatever topic of Warhammer 40K you guys would like us to create a video about. Uh, and of course, if you're not a subscriber, if you're new to the channel, subscribe because we put out Warhammer 40k content every single day. With that said, let's get into 40 facts about the Blood Angels. The Blood Angels are one of the 21st founding legions of Space Marines and were originally the 9th Legion. They are the noble descendants of the most angelic of the Primarchs, Sanguinius. They are perhaps one of the most celebrated chapters in the entirety of the Imperium. Their countless heroic deeds and victories, known to untold billions of the Emperor's subjects across the length and breadth of the galaxy. The Blood Angels paint their power armor blood red with a black chapter badge and squad markings in the color of the Space Marines company. The trim varies but is usually the same red as the armor or black. The Imperial Aquila on the chest plate is usually yellow, gold, white or black. The Blood Angels take pride in the artistry of their war gear. Some Battle Brothers craft new decorations onto their power armor. Others inherit suits already heavy with blood drops, golden wings, and other emblems. Either way, these flourishes embody the nobility to which the Blood Angels aspire. The Blood Angels chapter badge is known in High Gothic as the Alatus Kader, or Wing Drop, the chapter's angelic wing drop of ruby. When portrayed on armor, this design is stylized and painted completely black on the left shoulder plate. In battle, the Blood Angels Legion was the incarnation of the Emperor's wrath upon those who rejected the gift of unity. Led by their angelic primarch, Sanguinius, their coming was nothing less than apocalyptic judgment delivered upon the guilty. The Ninth Legion conquered lost human worlds by their fury as well as the dread and awe they created. Entire nations fell to their knees, cowering before the wrath and splendor of these Red Angels lest they too perish beneath the Space Marines' glimmering blades. Against Xenos, no such quarter was given, and the wrath of the Legion was made manifest as a tide of unrelenting carnage that only gave way once complete extermination was achieved. Throughout the Great Crusade, the Ninth Legion became renowned for its wars of ultimatums. These campaigns of open domination against non-compliant worlds began with Sanguinius or one of his Praetors, affording a world one opportunity to embrace unification or face a day of revelation, in which they would suffer the fury of the Blood Angels unleashed. Many foes confronted by the gathered Ninth Legion hosts were overcome with dread and awe, and capitulated without hesitation. Those who did not would see the shining consequence of the Angel Sanguinius transformed into a savage fury as blinding destruction was delivered from on high. The Ninth Legion's tactical doctrines were heavily focused on the use of powerful shock assaults to shatter an enemy's resistance in a single devastating blow. Because of this, flamers and melta weapons were strongly favored as a tactical level, both because of their efficiency and ability to provide a fearsome display in action. Just as the Ninth Legion was famed for its set-piece shock assault tactics, so it was also famed for its ability, when pressed, to stand against any that would overwhelm it, no matter the odds and no matter the foe, and even in its death throes, drag its enemies down with its destruction. To even their brother Legionus Astartes, such feats of resilience sometimes seemed to border on the unnatural and could be laid to no single tactical plan, nor doctrine, nor biological trait but rather have their origins within their unshakable will to endure, as if somehow fueled by the rage and grief brought in their hearts by the death of their battle brothers. To the blood angels themselves, such battles became known as the days of sorrows, when few would stand against the many and sell their lives dearly, their names and deeds to be reborn eternally in the most sacred of the legion's rites of battle and remembrance. Every Space Marine chapter is defined by the legacy of their Primar. Through their gene seed, these mighty beings would shape their sons' bodies, while through teaching and philosophy, they would influence their minds. Yet none among the Primarchs would have as profound an effect upon their progeny as did Sanguinius. Although it is known to but a few, the Blood Angels and their successor chapters are a dying breed, for they suffer from the dreadful genetic flaw. 
a hidden flaw in the genetic matrix of the blood angel's gene seed. Within Sanguinius' own biotype, there was a trait that lay buried and waiting to be awakened. During the Great Crusade, this strange affliction began to manifest, affecting some of the Blood Angels legionnaires over the course of several decades. The story was always the same. A warrior of the Ninth Legion in the throes of battle eventually succumbed to a rage that continued to build and build until his reason was lost. When a Blood Angel's battle brother succumbed to this affliction, his humanity would be stripped away until only his feral core remained, and the blood-crazed Astarte wanted to do nothing but kill and kill, satisfying himself with blood and more blood. At the end, at the very worst of it, he lost every last piece of himself until death was a kindness. Fortunately, only a handful of Astartes had been inflicted over the course of two Terran centuries. Most would perish in battle without anyone taking note of their growing insanity. But if their degeneration became noticeable, then Sanguinius himself or the Sanguinary Guard's commander would usually be the one to end the life of the afflicted battle brother. Yet in the closing days of the Great Crusade, the outbreaks of this affliction began to occur more often. Sanguinius feared that in time, this affliction would grow to encompass every member of the Ninth Legion. Sanguinius had been aware of the flaw in his genome for several years, keeping the truth from the Emperor and his fellow Primarchs. He could not speak of this to any of the others, for to do so would diminish his legion in the eyes of his brothers and the Imperium. Some of his brother Primarchs would see this as a weakness and seek to turn his truth against him. Sanguinius was afraid to confine in his father the Emperor for he could not take the risk of being responsible for the extermination of the Blood Angels from the Imperial history, like the 2nd and the 11th Legion. He was determined not to see a third empty plinth erected beneath the roof of the Hemagon in the Imperial Palace on Terra, as the 9th Legion's only memorial. Sanguinius continued to search for a solution, but continued to fail in his endeavor. Some of the Angel's sons had learned a measure of the truth, but only the Sanguinary Guard's commander, the 9th Legion's master apothecary on Baal, and a few others were fully aware of the extent of this affliction. They were united with Sanguinius in finding a way to repair this flaw, but ultimately this quest proved futile before the tragedy of the Horus Heresy swept away all other concerns. As a result, from the day of their sanguination to their death on the battlefield, the Blood Angels and their successors fight not only with countless foes, but with a burning urge inside of them. This is the Red Thirst, the legacy of their Primarch Sanguinius, that plagues many Blood Angels with visions of death. In battle, Blood Angels can harness these visions to evoke a ferociousness that gives the Blood Angels chapter its reputation for unparalleled brutal assaults. Sometimes, however, the Red Thirst is so overwhelming that the Blood Angels forget their noble heritage and completely lose control over themselves. It is not unheard of for Blood Angel squads to abandon advantage positions to engage the enemy in hand-to-hand -hand combat. More often than not, these assaults turn out to be so devastating that unprepared enemy forces are simply swept away. The Blood Thirst also causes warriors to suffer an unusual bloodlust instilling within them a thirst for the blood of their enemies. The other genetic flaw is a mental instability called the Black Rage, as a result of the psychic imprint left by their Primarch's death, or by the terrible wound given to Sanguinius on Cygnus Prime by the bloodthirster greater demon Kabanda. This can cause them to go insane prior to or during the battle, and feel the rage of Sanguinius himself during the final days of the Battle of Terra. The condition is largely irreversible, and only a few Blood Angels have managed to defeat the Gene Curse. Victims are locked away in the Tower of Amiro, named after the ancient chapter master of the Blood Angels, also called the Tower of the Lost on the Blood Angels' homeworld of Baal. When a Space Marine is overcome by the Black Rage, he is reborn into a world of constant anger, hatred, fury, and nothing else. As well as Sanguinius memories, the Blood Angels and their kin are genetically touched with a small portion of the Primarch's unearthly powers, boasting their strength and vitalities to superhuman levels. 
rather than let them face a slow, insane death. Blood Angels and their successors will form those Battle Brothers who have been newly succumbed to the Black Rage into a new specialty unit of the chapter known as the Death Company. They wear specialized power armor, black, and dotted with red crosses to symbolize the wound of Sanguinius, and are often led by a few chapter officers, notably chaplains, who are able to communicate orders to the insane troops. They are then sent out to perform the most dangerous assaults, hoping for a quick and honorable death in combat. By some unknown means, the genetic flaw in the Blood Angel's gene seed that produces the Black Rage also seems capable of extending the victim's lifespan, at least until he finally succumbs to the rage. Lord Commander Dante, the chapter master of the Blood Angels, is by far the oldest living loyalist space marine, not including those interned in dreadnoughts, born more than a thousand years before the present time, a feat that may only have been possible because of this genetic flaw. These traits have also been passed on to the Blood Angel successor chapters, such as the Flesh Terrors, Blood Drinkers, and Angels Sanguinae. One successor chapter, the Lamenters, managed by unknown means to eliminate the flaw from Sanguinius's gene seed, but have been stricken by extraordinary bad luck in battle and as such has been nearly annihilated. And those were 40 facts about the Blood Angels. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. There's going to be a part two where we go into more information about the Blood Angels, specifically their um, combat doctrines and um, just a bunch of good stuff. So subscribe to the channel to get that. If you're already a subscriber, don't forget to hit the little, little notification button. It's the little bell icon right next to the subscribe button. Uh, by doing that, you're actually going to allow a death company soldier or marine to finally have his rest and die um, in battle, of course. So please hit the little notification button. And um, again, guys, thank you so much for liking, commenting, and sharing. If you are a Blood Angels player, how well do you do in the meta? I'm just, just curious. How, how well do you do in your um, games when you go play with your friends or at GW? But with that said, guys, this was Gersh1 with One Mind Syndicate, signing out. Oh,